You had, you had what we call natural disposition, which was corrupted by the church. The church took people from monotheism, worshipping one God, into worshipping three beings, or three persons, rather. Sorry. The, by the, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Why did it say you don't look Iranian? Well, it doesn't really because, matter. Yeah. That's, that's not the point I was making. Yeah. So we don't know what Jesus looked like. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if someone claims that I saw Jesus in my dream, we will have to question that claim. I okay. Would not say that, so if but, yeah, if some if someone claims that I saw the Prophet of Islam in my dream or I saw Prophet Moses in my dream, we can't just take that. That's a personal experience. It could be right. It could be wrong. We believe the devil exists. He can also inspire dreams. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. I so don't think, I don't think the devil will tell me to be a Christian and hate the devil. That doesn't Why not? Because a house divided against the soul cannot stand. You cannot be a, a yeah. rivalry with the devil and still be. No, but if Christianity is false, if the Trinity, if the cross is false. And and, and and we can show how that, that that's the case, then why would the devil not do it? Show that it's the case. If it's, if you can. Christianity? Yeah. Do you believe in the Trinity? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Then the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity itself, if you, if you do a historic study of it, you'll come to realize that there is no basis, there are no foundations for, for a Christian today to claim that it is a doctrine that comes from God or from the scripture. Well, you see it in the books of Isaiah. This is like hundreds of years before Christ. Yeah. Saying how it sort of describes Christ coming and that he comes into the world. He he's doing good things and so on, but he's disrespected. He's eventually killed. You mean Isaiah 53? Uh, yes, that's the one of them. The that actually describes Christ. Actually. The suffering servant of Isaiah. Yeah, and there's other bits in Isaiah as well. Okay, let me explain now why that cannot be true, because there are other passages more categorical more categorical in the application that mention Jesus by name, that mention him by name, okay, that go directly against your understanding of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 for the viewers, just to explain very quickly, is a chapter in the book of Isaiah where a, a servant of God is being punished for the sins and the crime of other people. And the Christians claim that that is actually Jesus. Okay, and Paul was one of the first people to claim that. He applied Isaiah 53 in the life of Jesus. Paul was the first one person to do that. Paul came up with this narrative uh, of the you know, Christians claim that that is actually Jesus. Okay, and Paul was one of the first people to claim that. He applied Isaiah 53 in the life of Jesus. Paul was the first person to do that. Because Paul came up with this narrative uh, uh, of, sorry, you know, the, 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 they don't even have the courtesy to ask. Only joking, guys, you know. <laughs> they just keep coming and putting gadgets on me. Okay. And, well, of course, Paul yeah. was persecuting Christians before he became a Christian. We, we don't know if that's true. Well, we don't, he said uh, he was. Okay. And, it's, well, and how do we know what he said is what he said? Well, how, how do, do we, we know what anybody said is what they said? Well, yeah, you that's know, a good they, question. They, a, they said things, they wrote them yeah, down. Yeah. That's the only way we know it. This, this question we can address later. But let's, let's talk about Isaiah 53 and biblical passages that contradict that uh, understanding, not the passage, the understand, the Christian understanding of Isaiah 53 directly. And amazingly, for some reason, Christian theologians haven't picked on it. For instance, what are the passages? Okay, let's talk about it. Isaiah 53, apparently, allegedly, by the standard Christian understanding, claims that Jesus was that serv suffering servant who was put on the cross for the sins of the Israelites. Well, when I read it, okay. it's uncanny, yeah. Okay. I'm saying there are passages in the Bible that address Jesus directly by name and that they contradict that understanding. For example, okay. for example, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, yeah. the dialogue between Jesus and the devil. The devil tempts Jesus to jump off the cliff, yeah. takes him on the height, this high plane, and tells him to jump off. And what does the devil use against Jesus? Knowing well that Jesus knows what he's using because Jesus is more versed than the devil himself, right? The, Jesus would know what the devil is using against him is something relevant to him and vice versa. Okay. And vice versa, right? Yeah. That only makes sense. The devil says it is written that a stone will not prick your foot, jump off. Then Jesus responds, it is also written, do not tempt God. That's right. Does, do you recall this passage? Yeah. Now, amazingly, the devil uses a prophecy against Jesus Christ 
which, which is about Jesus Christ. It's not in Matthew. It is in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Okay. So, the devil knows that the prophecy... Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah, yeah. The devil knows that what he's using in front of Jesus is known to Jesus. And Jesus knows that it is about him. Yeah. That's why he uses it. Otherwise, why would the devil use something that's not relevant to Jesus? But how yeah. does any of this prove that Jesus is not God? No, no. God is... Or a, is not part of the church, uh, 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 No, no. This is a separate question. We're talking about the crucifixion now. Okay. Whether it was Jesus who was crucified, whether Isaiah 53, your understanding of it is correct. Or whether it, 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 actually, it actually can be substantiated from the biblical passages otherwise. Well, if so, Jesus wasn't so, crucified, why did everyone at the time believe it? Let's go step by step. Let's go step by step. And then I will see whether your understanding of Isaiah 53 holds water. So the devil tempts Jesus by using that prophecy. The question is, where is that prophecy? Why is the devil using that particular um, passage? to tempt Jesus to jump off the cliff okay. because the devil t tells him, you know you're not going to be harmed. Nothing's going to come, uh, 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 you know, no, no harm is going to come to you. A stone will not prick your foot. In other words, you won't, you won't even get a scratch. Jump. And Jesus says, it also says in the law, do not tempt God. Okay. Yeah. The devil is using Psalm 91. The entire chapter is a prophecy about an individual who will be threatened by his people, who will be attacked by his people, and against all odds, God will protect him. He will call upon God, and God will answer him. God will not leave him to brutality, even to the extent that a scratch will not be uh, uh, inflicted upon him. He won't, uh, uh, to use the exact words uh, from Matthew 4, a stone will not prick his foot. And the final verse of this passage amazingly mentions that God will give him his salvation. Okay? The word for salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua. Savior, yeah. Yes. And what was the name of Jesus? Jesus Christ, the Savior. No, what was his name in Hebrew? Yeshua. 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 This is the only prophecy in the entire text of the New and the Old Testament that mentions Jesus by name somewhat closely. Oh, somewhat, see somewhat closely. Like the exact name. Uh, exact name. Yeshua. Okay. Well, well, let, let's stick to this one. Okay. When we read the chapter and we, when we see the, the, the descriptions of what God will do for this person, having read it and having applied it to Jesus Christ, one cannot come away with this notion that he will be put on the cross he will be nailed, he will be lashed, he will be cut, he will be stabbed with a spear, okay, he will be spat at, they will put a, a crown of thorns on his head and he will be brutalized, carry his own cross all the way to be nailed to the cross. You don't see that person in that passage, in that chapter. In that passage, maybe not. Okay. Sorry? Maybe not in that passage. No, that, the question is, if that prophecy is about Jesus, which Christian authorities have acknowledged somewhat, somewhat vaguely. Which Christian uh, authorities? Uh, like? Augustine. Okay. Yeah, there are classical Christian authorities who acknowledge. What they do is they, they play some games because they know, wait, they know that if they accept the whole thing, it goes directly against the concept of the cross. I, okay. I, I, I yeah. mean, I'm on my fifth reading of the Bible and I just don't get that impression that anything's going against the Jesus being on the cross. But there are other passages which... Are let's like read that. Psalm 91. Let me read it for you. Okay. Let me read it for... Let, let, let's see. There is another passage that says, The virgin shall bear his son, and he shall be named... Emmanuel. All, all of those are irrelevant to our... our, our well, our, it's not, because it's, wait. you know, Immaculate Conception, Mary bearing Jesus... Firstly, we need to establish whether this entire chapter is talking about one person. That's the first... Before we... I like to go do things systematically. Commentaries are clear that this is about one person. This is one individual who the passage is talking about. Matthew 4, the dialogue between the devil and Jesus Christ, tells us this is about Jesus. So this prophecy, this chapter is about Jesus Christ. Well, I have to go and read the psalm from my Catholic Bible with its footnotes. Okay. Really get it. No problem. You can do that. But let's see if this is someone who is being crucified, nailed to the cross, brutalized, 
spat at, insulted, humiliated, all of that. Let's see if that, the, 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 that image of Jesus Christ or that, that perception of Jesus Christ uh, actually fits into this passage. Psalm 91, the whole chapter. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Verse 3. Surely He will save you. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampant, okay. rampart. You will not fear the terror of night. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. In other words, we're talking about harm, okay? You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands. The Quran literally states, let me, okay. let me come in. The Quran literally states, okay. They killed him not, they crucified him not, rather it appeared to them so. And Bal Rafa'ahu, in fact, instead he was lifted above, he was raised above. Here we are told, let me finish this, they will lift you up in their hands, yeah. you will be raised so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Okay. This is the part which in Matthew 4, the devil uses against Jesus Christ to convince him to jump off the cliff. But this is in direct reference to Jesus though. We'll see. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. Okay. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Okay. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Where it says show him my salvation, it says Yeshua. The word salvation for salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua. Okay, but that okay. mean that's Jesus. Uh, no problem. Okay. Let's see if it's Jesus, this passage. And if it's Jesus, if, let's agree first. If it is Jesus, then he cannot be crucified. Do you agree? Well, I don't agree because Jesus was crucified. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, not, let's not jump to the conclusion. Let's stick to this part. If this is Jesus, he cannot be possibly crucified. I don't know. I'm not going to make a claim like that. I need to know. Let me explain. It says he will call upon me and I will answer him. Jesus, we are told in the narrative of the New Testament, he called upon God Almighty, Every believer Father. Call upon God and God could no, no, anybody. this is a special reference. This is a reference to a, 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 um, a coming disaster, I mean, an, said, a, an imminent disaster, which is coming the, w the way of this slave. There's a lot of Psalms about imminent disasters. And you said Yeshua is salvation. Salvation applies to us all. So anytime God is offering salvation, it doesn't mean he's specifically talking about Jesus. It's just I, I have already given my reasons why I believe this is about Jesus, because Matthew 4 makes a very clear reference to this. Does it? Yeah, the devil. Well, it's not clear to me. Okay. Jesus was there. Yeah. The devil was there. And he said words like, you know. And the devil says, it is written, yeah. it is written. In other words, it is written in a prophecy about you that jump off, because the devil is applying this prophecy on Jesus, and Jesus not does not deny okay. it. So in Matthew, it doesn't say the devil is applying this prophecy on Jesus. Because the words, a stone will not prick your foot, cannot be found anywhere else in the Bible. This is the only part, this is the only place where these words are used, which devil, the devil, the devil says it is written. 
where? The question is, where is it written? I'd also have to go and now read the Bible with a view to that passage, <laughs> just to see. Well, let, let, yeah, this is why I'm talking to you, so that you actually go and review your case. Go and review your ideas in light of these things. If the devil is talking to Jesus and he says to him, it is written. Okay, written. Where? What is written? It is written that a stone will not prick your foot. And why is the devil using those words at that occasion? Because he is telling Jesus to jump. So the devil is telling Jesus, it is written about you, that you will not be harmed. A stone will not prick your foot, so jump. And, and that's a lot of conclusion based no, on no, no. evidence. I'm reading, okay, let's, uh, you, you want me to, you want me to, I don't have change, sorry. Okay, 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 we, I don't have change, sorry. Okay, okay, so, um, do you know, wait, 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 do you not help from the government? Uh, do you not help from the government? Okay, no English? Okay, no problem, sorry. Because a lot of, um, you know, people who are like this, the government helps them here. This is Britain, so people can easily go to the government and get support. I don't think it's always easy. I think some suggestions. Yeah, possibly, yeah, possibly. But then there are other issues as well. I mean, we have to be very careful. As Muslims, we are very encouraged to uh, donate and give charity, right? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, but we, we, we have responsibility towards charity as well. We have to ensure that we're, we're, we're giving our money is given in the right cause to the right people. Sometimes, you know, there are other issues. Can make a separate yeah. point? Yeah. You guys obviously had a discussion about the Bible, the verse. My discussion with Cyrus that we're having before is that he came from a Shia family. Originally, yeah, Originally. My, my family was, but and his, I grew up secular. Yeah, but his conversion, Catholicism, was based on the dream, right? And we in Islam obviously do believe that dreams can be from God and they can be good as well. But they can also but, be from the devil. But they can be as well. Yeah. So the discussion you've had so far is about biblical verses and you're saying it's not Jesus, you're saying it is Jesus. But the fundamental point that we've been discussing previously is about the criteria to choose uh, belief or religion cannot be a dream. Do you remember the discussion that we had before? There should be reason, not a dream. Do you see? But but look, well, hang on. that's for that. Me it was a dream that I prayed first, then I had a dream. I, I understand. So for me, it's like an Dr dreams. Dreams are not how the dreams is. Dreams are not our our source of uh, finding the truth. Dreams can be. Wild, they can be anything. Day dreams, day dreams can. Maybe they, you describe they, the dream yeah, in, yeah. in day to day. It isn't right, um, but I mean, at that point in time, so I was, I was looking at different religions. I was quite interested in Buddhism because I had a very secular outlook. Tibetan Buddhism, to be specific. But I, I was speaking to um, my landlord at the time, who was Muslim. And we were talking about Islam, but then we talked about Zoroastrianism and Judaism, and how like end times prophecies are the same. And I was also reading, uh, listening to the audio Bible at the time. And I was thinking, oh, well, some of it's quite interesting, actually, but I don't know. I don't know what's true. Did you read the Quran at that time? Um, I've since listened to an audio Quran. Um, well, no, I haven't read the Quran. Okay. Audio Quran. But, so what my landlord was saying was quite interesting as well. So for the first time in my life, I prayed, and it wasn't the prayer of selfishness. It was just, what is the truth? Right. And then I had the dream to tell me it's not actually the religion I want, Buddhism. It's a religion I least want, Catholicism. Yeah. Okay, but that's a separate point which we can address. But let's continue with this one because we started with this one. If, and you said you accepted Catholicism, right? Yes. And Catholicism by necessity constitutes belief in the crucifixion of Jesus oh, Christ, absolutely. which believe we believe Christ to be false, true, which we believe to be false, and we can show biblically that it's false. Well, you're pointing okay. to one passage and saying this passage No, it's, it's not one passage. It's an entire chapter that builds the case quite nicely. Not, so, so, for me, so, not from what I've heard. I mean, if you don't want, I mean, if, 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 if people don't want to see, it cannot be shown. Because there are so many other verses in the Bible that say that yeah, and you know, all, Christ is coming and he's going to be led like a lamb. No, all of them, all of them are vague prophecies. Not one of them, I can tell you, I can guarantee you, not one of them is clear. Every single one of them has been, uh, has been, how can I put it, uh, has been explained, has been interpreted. Okay, this one is quite categorical. The application is quite categorical. From your okay. perspective. No, from your perspective. Not from my perspective. Okay. Uh, you read the Bible, right? Yeah. Okay, well, and, and chapter 4 in Matthew, we are told that this refers to Jesus. And Jesus does not contradict it. 
He does not controvert what the, he says. It is also written. Also means, yeah, that's fine. Hang on, hang on. That's He's okay. Making assertions that uh, uh, Matthew says Psalm 91 refers to Jesus precisely. We don't have that. No, we do. No, we don't. Let me explain how. The devil uses specific wording and says it is written. So he is referring to a passage in the Bible. And he is claiming that this passage is about you, Jesus. Jesus could turn around and say to the devil, you are a liar. This well, is not even about me. The devil me. didn't say Psalm 91 is referring to you. No. So, 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 when dev the devil says it is written... You're talking about explicitness. There's no, nothing explicit in that chapter in Matthew no. that says the devil is talking let, about... Let me, let me, just follow me. That when the devil says it's written, what is written? Exactly. That a stone will not prick your foot. Yes. The question is, where is that written? You're saying the only place is Psalm 91. The only place in the entire text of the Bible, those words are found in Psalm 91, that chapter. So the devil is claiming that that's about you, Jesus. Jesus turns around and says, it is also written. I mean, so it also means, also means in our figure of speech, that fine, fine, but it's also written. I don't know okay? what the exact... So if, say, if he says to me, you are a historian, but then I'll say, I am also um, a Muslim traveler. I'm also a Muslim. I'm not saying, okay, if he says to me, you are an engineer. Hold on a second. I'm not an engineer. Hang on a minute. I'm not, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about details and so on, I don't know what the Greek actually says, but a stone will not prick your foot. Well, a stone did not prick his foot. He was whipped, he was tortured, he was crucified. There's nothing in there about a stone no, pricking his yeah, foot. Yes, yes, you're right, so, you're right. But yeah. the prophecy, brother, the prophecy, the devil is saying it's about you. And Jesus does not controvert that. The G Jesus does not controvert that. That means it is about him. And if it's about him, we go to the chapter. And when we see the chapter, we don't see a crucified Messiah there. We see a very powerful, strong messenger of God who will call upon God. God will save him. He will be lifted high. He will be given a long life. He will not die. He will be given a long life and he will have salvation. I, actually, this, is the, this then makes you think maybe it's not talking about Jesus. Then. No, it is life about Jesus. Long life. Jesus will have eternal life because he is God. Is God with the Father okay, no, and with the Holy Spirit? No, no, this, uh, actually, actually, if this is Jesus, this, is, this cannot possibly be God. In this passage, anyone who's being spoken of is not God because right. he's calling upon God. So he's, he's, he's not, if he's God, he doesn't need to call no, upon God. God yeah. just said call upon God, like Jesus who told you the Father. Okay. Right. He's on earth. He's uh, this is, this is why we don't, the way, this is why I believe your dream was not a divine dream. It was clearly a misguidance oh, because I, because if you believe Catholicism is the the way forward, yes. it's the truth. Then clearly you will struggle. You will struggle a, a very long time to show that to us because we have been here for years talking to Christians about these things that we cannot find your doctrine of the Trinity in the Bible. The crucifixion cannot be fully supported from yeah the New Testament. There are passages that claim that, but we are saying. That cannot be true because Psalm 91 does not show us a crucified Messiah. Hang on, hang on. in the Bible, in the New Testament, uh, Jesus tells us that he's with the Father all day. He's constantly communicating with the Father. Yeah, that you cannot he's a prophet of God. And that the Father is in fact his Father, that he is the Son, and that you cannot go to the Father except through the Son, and that it, there's talk about giving the Holy Spirit to us, and so on. So there's talk of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The and, 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 and do you know when this, this view came about? Well, if it's in the gospel, it would have come about no later. It's then. not in the gospel. It is in the gospel. Show me where Jesus is God in the gospel. A direct uh, God the Father in the Old Testament, we find thousands, not one, two, three, four, ten vague references, but rather thousands, thousands of explicit references to God the Father as God. Well, it's not God the Father, God. it's just God. No, 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 it's God the Father. I think it's just God. No, Isaiah 63... Uh, uh, 15 uh, mentions uh, the the person as the father. That's interesting because that actually makes it more like Trinitarian thing. If there's a father, no. then there's a son. No, there isn't because the Israelites were the sons. Israelites were the sons. We are okay. All yeah. So God. so Israelites called their God the Father, the Creating Father, the Creator. That's the title they gave Abba. 
they gave that title to God Almighty for being the creator. So father is the only person mentioned by name in the Old Testament and he's the only God because same book Isaiah 44 6 tells us he is the first he he not him or they okay he is the first he's the last and there is no one else there's no one else beside him beside him means that one person you see for us God the Father Son and Holy Spirit are all one no right no so let me let he, me explain and and and, 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 and by the way he is the first he is the, the last the, the, Jew, the Jewish conception of God was one person one entity one being and Jesus confirms that amazingly in the gospel of John for us the three is one no okay for you for you yeah. for not for Jesus let me explain how well, well yeah let me explain how for Jesus chapter 8 of the gospel of John Jesus speaks to the Jewish people he says I do not glorify myself it is the father who glorifies me yes of whom you say that he is your God so Jesus is telling the Israelites that your God, the one you have been worshiping, is the Father. Also Him. Sorry. Also Him. They have never the Jews. The Jews have never worshipped Him. He also says you can't go to the Father except through Him. No problem. We we accept that. We as Muslims we accept that. Well, that's that for, no, for Jesus at that time he was the messenger of God. He is the only way to God for the Israelites. He is a messenger of God because he's also God. And Brother, show me. I, I, if you show me a categorical verse in the New Testament where Jesus claimed to be God or he is God by direct references. Wait, uh, for like, for, okay, I'll give you okay, the examples here, here, of Father. I'll give, you, I'll give you, I don't know the chapters and verse like you do. But is that when they go up um, the mountain to pray, Jesus, Peter, John and James. And God the Father comes out and says, listen to him, he is my son my chosen so god the father comes down yeah in the form of a cloud and then you hear his voice so they see they see him they see no they hear god they hear god okay and then after that the cloud okay. goes away and they find Jesus. so so son we're not discussing the issue of son here okay. you're confusing jesus as a son uh and jesus as god okay, so there's another one uh where jesus no no i i need a reference where god almighty jesus is god almighty okay this view was not propo proposed by any of the church fathers. I challenge you. I challenge you as a Catholic. I challenge you to produce one state, produce one statement where any of the church fathers called Jesus Christ God Almighty, equal to God the Father. Well, if the apostles they called him divine. They called him God with lowercase g. We have plenty of references. Ignatius. Okay, for example, others. We have references where they called him God with lowercase g. That's not a problem at that time. You know why? Because the Israelites are called gods with lowercase g. What? Yes. Well, I've never called Israelites gods or us gods. The book of Psalm. The book of Psalm. Psalm. Uh, the book of Psalm. Uh, Psalm, a, Psalm 82. Like Psalm 82. God. Psalm 82, verse 6. You are all gods. Exodus 7. Chapter 7, verse 1. I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Moses. Oh, okay, but that doesn't mean you are a God. No, no, no. It's a I'm God not, to Pharaoh. I, you appear I, as I, you I, are a God I, to Pharaoh. Is, Israelites were called gods, right? I don't know about that. Yes. Ask me. I'll show you. Okay, but it's what, like what? when Jesus says to, um, to his apostles, who do you say I am? And Peter speaks up at the time, Simon, saying, you are the son of the living God. Yeah, no problem with that. Okay. No problem with that. That's not a big problem for us. Okay, you're saying he's not the Father of Mysie. We don't say he's the Father of Mysie. I have we said, Psalm 82, verse 6. Psalm 82, verse 6. I have said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Yes, Rise but they are gods. So, Ignatius, the church fathers, in the first 300 years, did some of them did refer to Jesus as God with lowercase g. None of them. Why worship him then? If he's God, with why Jesus? worship David? David was worshipped. Daniel was worshipped. Daniel isn't worshipped. He's a prophet. Okay, I'll the show you. I'll show again. God. I'll show you. It's like when the angels come I, down. I, I will show you. When the angels come down in the Old Testament, and everybody bows to them, or the prophets bow to them, they say, "Rise, we are just servants of God, like you." Okay. So they are not gods.
King Nebuchadnezzar, sorry, the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 56. King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor. But if you go to all the different, okay, uh, well, wait, 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 no, 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 wait, it's wait. It's not because Daniel no, was a god, no, it's no, because no, Nebuchadnezzar was a look, heathen who didn't understand King, these King things. James Bible, then the King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel. Worship. I mean, okay, these are not my. I, I didn't write these. No, 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 no. Okay, this wait. Is, like, you're taking okay. things out of context. No, no, no I'm not. I'm not. You, you said why? No, no. You, you, you said why was Jesus? Jesus said was a heathen who worshipped idols. He would worship anything. Okay. So he saw Daniel survive the fire okay, and okay. then falls below. Fine. Okay. So then I'll show you. Da David was similarly worshipped. I'll show you passages. David was worshipped. I'll show you. Okay, so if, if king, no, 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 okay, David was worshipped. If you if you think Nebuchadnezzar was a, he was a priest king, but he wasn't God. Okay, let's see. Your Doe Rames Bible, um, I mean, we oh, can no, pull no, that no, out. I think I okay. Okay. okay, I'm going to show you passages. People, people prostrated to David. One second, I'm just looking for the passages. Okay. Okay. And worshipped him. There are so As many. A king. Uh, no, no. Look. As a king. Do you know the word? You use the word worship, not me. You said Jesus was worshipped. I'm showing you people who were also worshipped by that virtue because they were worshipped by their own people. As a king. So what is the worship? What is worship to you? What is worship to you? Can you worship a king? Can you worship a king? I don't worship anything. Okay. Can can anyone in the modern sense of the word I don't worship? Can biblically can a human being be worshipped? No, it shouldn't be in the sense, in the religious. No, they, sense, they were not. they were worshipped no, biblically. No no. no, no, he was a priest king, but they weren't worshiping as God because that would be heresy. That's you your know, spin. No. The Bible doesn't make it clear as God because they knew as God he cannot be worshipped. The worship means biblically. I'll I'll, I'll explain where, where where this comes from. The word proskonion, which is the Greek word for prostrating in paying respects so worship biblically means paying respect dignifying honoring well, an I elder you respect, okay. are you a god or am i just paying no respect? that's why you use the argument jesus was worshipped therefore he's god i'm showing you no because others were also worshipped and they're not god so that goes out of that goes out of to move that out of the, the, the okay, equation so, no because there, there are passages in the bible that say jesus is god Jesus came down to Paul as he's traveling in the desert to Damascus, knocks him off his feet. You, you, you said, you said Jesus is God because he's worshipped. I showed you others who were being worshipped by the Israelites. Okay, people use the word worship in different contexts. Right? Okay. So, and, and so, so, so worship is not. So move, so move on to something else. Worship is out. Now what? No, Why worship, is he God? Uh, you can worship God as God, right? I'm but saying you giving, used an argument. You used an, argu you used an argument. It's, it's on a whole different level no. when it's God. You used an because you don't have an explicit reference about the divinity or, of Jesus Christ. You're using vague, indirect references it's about the to prove. It's yeah. about the inadequacy yeah. of language. I have a Polish friend, and you know, in the Bible it says, "Honor your mother and father." In the Ten yeah. Commandments, right? But in Polish, it's worship your mother and father. Oh. I accept that. Don't worry. They're, um, they're messing around here. I don't know what happened there. So, don't worry. Uh, so, fine. so in Polish, yeah. So in Polish, they say, "Worship your mother and father." It doesn't mean like your mother and father. Listen, I, 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 I agree. I, I am agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. For you to use this argument that Jesus was worshipped, therefore is God. I am. I'm breaking that argument, showing you other biblical passages where other Israelite prophets were worshipped. The word is there, worship. And as I explained, okay. like with Nebuchadnezzar, you're taking it out of context. No, I, I, you want me to show you other passages where Israelite prophets were worshipped by Israelites? Well, I don't think we're come, going to come to an agreement. Yes, yeah, so, so move on from worship. Use something else. I'm, I'm waiting. Give me something to show that Jesus was God. Something categorical. God the Father, no discussion. Thousands of references. I am your God, worship me. I am your God, worship me. I am your God. Give me something like that from Jesus. Why is Jesus playing these games? If he's God, he should have said it. He no, should have said it. No. Yeah. Because it's about faith and it's about belief. No, it's not about riddles. Yes. It's not yes. about riddles. Because if, if God comes, it just does loads of tricks and lightning. Well, comes out the Bible of sky says God is not the author of confusion. Do you agree? Oh, 
I, I don't know about the passages. Like, no, it's, it's there. No, but the point is, people have to believe in it. Faith has to be a leap. You have to surrender to God. If God just comes not down, blind, not blind like faith. Judgment no, day, no, 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 no. About the divinity of God, about His authority and His right to be worshipped, there is no vagueness. It has to be explicit. There, otherwise, he has no case against us. I mean, look, he did enough things. Okay. He, he healed the blind, he cured the sick. M Moses did similar things. There are Israelite prophets who did similar things. Through God, yes. Yeah, through God. So is Jesus. But Jesus through God. is God. No, Jesus it's is saying through to him. Jesus said, I can of my own self. Listen now. I can of my own self do nothing. This is Jesus speaking on earth. I can of my own self do nothing. It is God who gives me the power. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Okay, now, if Jesus himself is telling you that he has no power of his own, his intrinsic power, why do you keep insisting otherwise? Because he does have power as well. He, he has risen. So you're not listening to him. He's on the right hand. You're not, you're, you're not, the right if I'm telling you I'm a historian, if I tell you I'm a historian yeah. and you keep insisting, no, you're not a historian, you are, uh, you are the prime minister of Britain. And I'm telling you, no, brother, I am not. I am a historian. And you keep insisting, no, 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 no. We're going to give you the right respect for, to, to, for, for being a prime minister. We're going to, no, we don't, we don't want to listen. That's what you're doing to Jesus. I believe Jesus. No. You pray in Hashem. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go and I'm going to have to pray. Because I'm praying. Just about, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. He'll yeah. just be five minutes. I'll, I'll carry on. Yeah, but these mics. No, it's fine. I'll hold it. So, so, I'm, I'm, please. Keep looking for references, uh, for, for direct references for the divinity of Jesus Christ. If Jesus is God, we want to worship him. If he's God, and we know he's not God, because there are so many passages, okay, in the Bible that tells you that, okay. Christians for thousand years, they have insisted otherwise. They have, out of the stubbornness, the spiritual, you know, the experiences, the emotions, the attachment to the church. Whatever. People have different reasons for believing in different things, right? Yeah. 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 No, just pray there five minutes and come back. Just so, yeah. so, look, his, his approach is very biblical. What we were speaking about is more to do with dreams as sources. Because I don't go to the Bible and, and, and uh, try and explain why a particular passage is not Jesus or Jesus is not God. That's not my area. But I'm more like, I'm of the belief that the dream that you saw uh, it, it should not be your reason for Catholicism. It could be, if anything, showing you Buddhism is wrong. And it could be that you misinterpreted it as meaning... Why would half be right but half be wrong? Go over the part again that you talked about the stream, that there was a stream and... So it's like, so you're looking at the river of life, it's stretched, stretched as far as the ocean, but it's flowing. And then you have, you know, the city of man come down. First one is if you have the Pope on a pedestal lands on the water, you're wondering if it's gonna sink, is it gonna make it? And it just about makes it. Right. Plays itself, some city of man comes down, or the worldly city, and you have the Dalai Lama on a pedestal, it's the religion I wanted. And the streets, you think it's gonna sink, but just as you think it's gonna make it a whole tidal wave as high as mountains, stretching from the horizon to the horizon comes and wipes it out. And I wake up and say, Oh. Is it not possible that what you were shown was something by the devil to turn you towards Christianity rather than Islam? Again, because, because, you know, one of the things about Islam which I'm sure you've been reading the Quran, you know, is that worshipping Jesus is unacceptable. You should only be worshipping God, you see. And if you think about it, Jesus himself used to bow down to God and worship God. Like in the uh, Forgotten Garden of Gethsemane or something. Yeah. That's very much like a Muslim prayer, isn't it? The way he put his head down on the floor. So isn't it safer, Cyrus, to die worshipping God alone rather than worshipping Jesus as God? Well, you see, we, we believe we do worship God alone, but God is a trinity, a single trinity. In a way that, say, a family, a husband, wife, and child is one unit. We believe God is one unit made up of a trinity. But and is that, that, they're inseparably linked. Is that something that the Bible teaches or something that was later on in the Treaty of Nicaea? And well, it's like, he, um, he's asking for explicit. Exactly, exactly, like that. Yeah. 
but it's, you can definitely infer it from God the Son, God the Father, the Holy Spirit is in there as well. And it all comes together, of course. So, if something is true from God, why does it need to be interpreted 300 years later, the Treaty of Nicaea? Well, I don't think it was interpreted 300 years later. It's just 300 years later. It was the first time the Christians could actually get together without being persecuted and actually talk about their faith and decide what are the heresies going around that we should avoid and what is the actual truth. What did the apostles read them like? What did, what did had Jesus taught them? What did the people who knew Jesus and the apostles read the text they liked? Couldn't it be, Cyrus, the case that the, what you're calling a heresy at the Treaty of Nicaea, the Arianites and the others, they could have said that, well, this is a heresy and we're on. Oh, sure, they would have done So how do you adjudicate? Well, you go back to the sources. Like, what were the people who knew Christ writing? What were they reading? So there were the apostles who had the Gospels. There were the people who were taught by the apostles and became bishops who made their own writings. We but they, but they had lots of diff theological differences. Over time. Yeah. Right? Uh, but the people who came up with the heresies, they weren't actually taught by the apostles. Well, St. Paul never met Jesus. And, well, well, and I believe he, he did in the road to, on the road to oh, in the dream. Yeah, so I carry on. You can hold on to the mic so that. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am, I am. We can both, yeah, we can I both be here. I mean, look, if you carry on with him, because I'm not that well versed when it comes to the, this oh, yeah, history. I think you're more well versed. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I know these basic things. Okay, so for, for example... I'm, I'm, I'm using these basic things because once, they are so basic. Yeah, one, one small point. I said Jesus never met Paul. That's true, yeah. right? I would say yes. Jesus didn't met Paul. Well, that's, that's because you are believing in the testimony of Paul. Paul is, Paul is otherwise an unknown, insignificant character. In fact, if anything... Yeah, I mean, you're laughing, but... but well, I mean, he was a conversion machine. Uh, uh, okay, conversion machine to what? Not, 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 to the, not, to, not to the message of Jesus Christ, to his own version, his own gospel. No, because in his letters to the different churches, he's saying, don't worship me or Peter. Of, of or course, I know, I know, I know, I know the history. But Paul is, so, is shown to be a hypocrite, even in, in the narrative he, which, he, which seems to have come from his own followers. For example, uh, in the book of Acts, we read about Paul in his life. And Paul has been preaching throughout the Gentile world that you don't have to follow the law of the Israelites. Yep. You don't have to follow that law. You don't have to circumcise. You can eat what, what you it's want. Right, okay, right. You don't have to follow those dietary rules. Yes. Having done all of that, Paul comes to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, he's attacked by the zealots of the law. Yep. And these are the Jews, yes. the Israelites. And they are very angry with him. Okay, And they accuse Paul of abolishing the law. Paul, for some reason, denies it. No, because the law wasn't abolished. It no, was no, it was, it was, when they say abolished, Paul, Paul did say the curse of law is lifted. That's Paul. But it, wait, wait. It, it's a, Are you aware Paul said that? Yes, yes, but okay. there's a context. That's, this is what those... There's a context this, to it all. They don't care about his context. Well, These, that's the problem. No, the <laughs> zealots, no, the zealots in Jerusalem don't care about his well, context. Know, yes. Exactly. So what happens? Paul is taken to who? Are you aware? Uh, to first... Uh, to uh, Jerusalem Council. Yeah, first to the rabbis and then to Pilate. No, no, forget no, the rabbis. The, uh, the Jerusalem the Jerusalem Council. Yes. Who are they? Well, they were rabbis, Pharisees. No, 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 no. He is taken to the Jerusalem Council. Who are they? The leaders. They are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Oh, well, no, hang on. No, no, at the point where he's attacked by the zealots, then he's effectively arrested and taken to the governor, right? No, no, it, no. It's before that. Wait, I'm talking about, no, it is after the accusation, he's taken to James. You know James? Okay, so when you say attacked by Zealots, not physically attacked. No, not physically. Okay, now we're no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, so there was, I, there was, so yeah. They, they were going to be physical. It's, it, the narrative gives us this, this impression that Paul was in danger in Jerusalem. That's why he was taken to James. So what does he do in James? No, the narrative says he goes to Peter and James. Uh, 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 Trust me, because taken. because it's, you can find this in Acts 15 and Acts 21. Yeah, there was a there debate is, is, about it. Yeah. And, and what was the debate about? What, what was whether, the debate? whether you have to circumcise or eat... Uh, not only that. Allowed. Not only, yeah, not only that. Kosher. It was about the law. And that too. Yeah. So Paul was accused of basically undoing the law for the Gentiles and the Jews. Because there was And the Jews. Said, and the Jews. Even as worshippers of Christ, you still had to obey the Mosaic. Paul was going to the Jews and the Gentiles, and yeah. it was telling them, Jesus died, we don't need the law anymore. 
In a sense, yes. No, not in a sense. Yeah. He was saying this categorically. Of course, Peter had his vision that said, you know, you no, can no. eat anything. Let's stick to like the topic. What God told Peter. Forget what Peter. God has made Forget Peter. Is We're dealing with Paul. Okay. Pa Paul had said to the Gentiles and the Jews, Jesus died. He's been crucified. He has lifted the curse of the law. Yes or no? I don't know if there was a word curse, but okay. Let's 100%. Say I, I take my word for it and check. Later. Okay. And if, if otherwise, gonna, it's going to take a lot of my time to pull out the references and show you. Okay. I, I can do that if you. Right. Okay. Um, he said, Jesus has died on the cross. He has paid for our sins. The curse of the law is lifted. And he also said, anyone because who the law is a curse. Law dies by the law because you can't fulfill it. Okay. So you're agreeing with me? Yeah. In a sense, yeah. yes. Yeah. But, no, mean, but. Like, <laughs> you keep saying in a sense, but I'm saying there are but categorical you're trying to say he's like somehow refuted everything Moses did. And no, and I'm not saying that. Oh, okay, sorry. Maybe I'm saying I'm saying the law is no longer applicable on those who follow Jesus. That's right, right, that's right. Fine, this is what I'm saying. You have the Ten Commandments, you have the commandment to love. Okay. Well. But the Mosaic law is at this point fulfilled. So Not we agree. So we, so we agree. Yes. Right. And this is what he gets accused of in Jerusalem. Uh, eventually, yes. And he denies it. How do we know that? How do we know that? He goes to James in chapter 21 of the book of Acts. We are told he's taken to James. James is the head of the council. James is the brother of Jesus, the very brother of Jesus Peter who is met. The head, but James is the leading figure. James is the leader of the Jerusalem church. James is the successor of Jesus Christ as far as the disciples are concerned. Peter is, he could be the head of the Jerusalem church. Peter is still the chief. Awesome. James, James is the head of the Jerusalem Council. Fine, okay. Okay, that means he's the successor of Jesus Christ. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's not debate that. That's gonna, that's gonna take us to, uh, on, on another tangent. But he was an apostle. And a bishop. Well, he, 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 he okay. Was, let's agree that he, was, he had a very he high was position. One of the three. Yeah. Peter and yeah. John. Okay. So, so he had a very high position. Very high position. Good. So Paul is taken to him to be judged. And the whole council. Whole council, but James is the head of the council. Yeah. James questions him that people are saying this about you, that you have undone the law. Because at that point, they had decided and, whether, no. for instance, you had to apply the law or not, or to what extent. No, 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 no. Paul has already, you follow Paul, right? Ca yeah. Cath Catholics, you are by default. Paul is an apostle and he was right. And in fact, Peter supported so, them. So, so, so forget about those guys. Peter supported them. And when Peter supported Listen, them, Listen, you're, 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 ju you're, you're jumping the gun. Okay. Let, me, let me stick to the topic. Paul is preaching against the notion of following the law. Yes, because the law was fulfilled. He's already done that. Okay. Jesus has died on the cross for years. Yes. He came to Jerusalem a long time, uh, long time after Jesus has been crucified, right? He's, he's already been preaching to the Gentiles and the Jews. Throughout the Mediterranean, right, throughout the Mediterranean region, that the curse of law has been lifted by the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The, the, just because Jesus died on the cross, we don't have to follow the Jewish law anymore. Right or wrong? It's, it, he, you're I making it longer than necessary. Seriously. Because yeah. you're saying the curse of the law, like every time I'm, he okay, spoke okay, about okay, sorry, sorry. Curse. I'm not saying it. He's, Paul no, said it. He did no, no, say no. It once. Oh, but, it's not, it's, but did he say it? Because you keep sure, saying I, I'm saying it. I'm sure, not saying it. Said, it's like the law had come to its fulfillment, right? Whatever he meant. So he are, said the curse of the law has been lifted. That's right. These are the words of Paul. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what the point is. The point is, Paul was preaching throughout the Mediterranean world yeah. that anyone who believes in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross does not have to follow the Jewish law. Full stop. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so why are we making it longer than it has what? to be? Okay, so it's, it's a very simple point. You get it, right? Yeah. That's so he comes. With, yeah. So in the book of Acts, chapter yeah. 21, we are told he comes to Jerusalem yeah. and he's accused of this very thing we agreed on yeah. because he was doing it. And then the council sides with him. And, and no, the council doesn't side with him. Oh. Okay, this is the point now. This is the point. He is rebuked and he's asked what these people are saying about you which is true, by the way, which that's, we... That's, I think that's maybe the start of the meeting, not the end of the meeting. We can read about the meeting. You want, you want me to read? Psalm 20, uh, sorry, Acts, uh, the book of Acts 21. Let me, I mean, let me make I, my point. I, I, we, let me make my out, point. James, the same thing and come no, to different no, no, we won't. Watch, watch. I, and I want you to respond to me. Paul has been preaching already for a long time that Jesus died for our sins. Yes. And we don't have to follow the Jewish law. Yes. 
Okay. He comes to Jerusalem and the Jewish zealots who are still following the law, including the disciples of Jesus Christ, are still following the law. They ask him, why are you doing this? And he's taken to James. So James tells him, he gives him a solution. He's taken to the council. Yes. Okay, now okay. I'm, no, no, I'm going to have to read it now. Sorry. I, I do apologize, but it's better that we read it. Acts 21. There you go. We're going to read it. So it's, it's, uh, you, you don't have to uh, dispute what's going on. Why is it not searching? My phone seems to have seized. One second. We're going to read Acts 21 and we're going to find out exactly what happened. Okay? So this part of the Bible, by the way, you believe, even though you're saying the Bible... No, 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 no. This is, to me, to me, none of them, none of this is important. I'm, I'm showing you, no, I'm showing you as a Christian, as a Catholic, that how inconsistent is your belief with the facts put down in your own scripture. You are very inconsistent with those. And it came to pass that after we were gotten uh, from them and had launched, we came with a straight course onto cross. And is this Acts? Yeah, Acts 21, yeah. So it's a long chapter and it goes down to Paul's company and Paul departed, all of that. Okay. The then Paul answered. It's easier to read. Okay, sorry. Okay, and the day following, Paul went with uh, went in with us onto James, and all the elders were present. Now this okay. is the part I want to deal with. Okay. Okay. And when he said, sorry, when he had saluted them, Paul had saluted them. Sure. He declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by His ministry. Like the conversion. Yes, yeah. conversions. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him. Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all ze zealous for the law. Okay. okay. So Jews have believed in Jesus, but they are f still following the law. Okay. Am I making this up? No, no, no. Okay. No, okay. And they are informed of thee, you, Paul, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses saying that they ought not to circumcise the children, neither to walk after the customs. This is exactly what Paul Which was doing. Was saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're good, good. We're getting there. So they told Paul that this is what people are saying about you, right? Okay. Correctly. Which, correctly, exactly. Now let's see what Paul does. Okay. What is, what is it there for? Yeah. They're asking him, what is going on, man? Right? The multitude must needs come together. For they will hear that thou art come. You have come to the council. Do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. Then take and then no, no wait, wait. And then take them and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee. I listen, listen, wait, wait, wait. Concerning thee are nothing. Wait. So what the council tells him that you have been teaching all of this. We'll complain. I thought you were talking wait, about. Wait, wait, wait. Please, 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 please. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, make yeah. it more. more. The, the council asks him that you have been teaching all of this. You have been accused of this. Now what you do is, right, you go to the temple and you sacrifice. Wait, wait, wait. You follow the law, you practice the law, so that people know that these things they tell, they are saying about you are not true. Okay, I, I, I was mistaken. I thought you were talking about another time when he comes to Jerusalem and they're talking about diets and stuff like that with Peter and James and the council. Let me get a, so le, I, let me get a, e let me get an easier translation. No, no, okay. it's, yeah, well. well King James is, is, is classical English and it's, modern, it's yeah. but most people won't understand it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so at that point he was coming to Jerusalem. Word of him had spread everywhere. And the Jews pretty much wanted to kill him. So he was advised, we don't want you to die. Go go with these four who are going to do some sort of penance. Go with them. Do your thing. So, so, if, so in other words, they were telling Paul to deny. Okay, because they themselves were of the opinion that Paul is not teaching this. 
because I don't believe why James, being a righteous follower of Jesus Christ, would lie to the people. At this point, they were just trying to uh, save Paul's life because the Jews wanted to kill him. That, that's your understanding, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, but that's not in the, that's not what the the passage is telling us. They are telling us. Look, read again. So do what we tell you. There are four men. This is a suggestion, by the way. Not with us, who have made a vow, take these men, join in their purification rites, and pr and pay their expenses, so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you. What are the reports that he is telling the Jews and the Christians living among Gentiles, or Jews and the Gentiles, sorry, that you don't have to follow the law, the Mosaic law? Okay, right? Okay. Yeah. Get the modern version. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait. It wasn't an instruction. It was a suggestion that he goes with them. Let's see what happened then. And Take he went this. With them. Yeah. Then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law, which is not true. He was not living in obedience to the law. Not to the Mosaic law, that's for sure. So that's what the law is. Okay. okay. So what does he do? He actually agrees with them and goes and pretends that I am following the law. He does the rites. He goes to the temple, he does exactly what council commands him to do, and he goes and practices the law. In other words, Paul is a liar. He's a hypocrite. He's a lying hypocrite because he's teaching one thing to Gentiles and the Jews living in the Mediterranean world, and in Jerusalem when he's questioned about it, and he knows that he's in trouble now, he, 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 he goes and does the opposite. Am I making this up? Am I making this up? You're not making it up, but you're, you're spinning it. I'm not spinning it. No, no, no. Okay, let's let's it. let's do the calculation. Let's do the deduction. Paul. By the way, James wasn't in that saying you're a bad person. Oh, who? I didn't claim that. I didn't claim that. Paul, Paul is teaching the Gentiles and the Jews in the Mediterranean world. You don't have to follow the law. That's right. He comes to Jerusalem. And, so Peter, that, and, Peter, Peter, Peter. and 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 he believes that's the way. That's grace. Okay, so right? you're talking about the last time he came to Jerusalem before he was sent up to Rome. He came to Jerusalem before that, when they were all deb debating the law, circumcision, and dietary requirements. And he went to the council where James was and Peter was. They had a long discussion, and then Peter displayed his vision, and they actually agreed with what Paul was saying that it was in fact correct. So he was consistent to the Christian faith. The, which is certainly Christianity the, at that point. The, was the, question, the question so was, was about the Jews here. in particular. Well, the Christians question. Or Jews, no, no. Right? But, there was yeah. never a split between Christianity. No, and there was. Gentiles and Jews. The yeah, issue, the issue here, the council is addressing, is that you're teaching the Jews living among the Gentiles. Okay. The first time Christianity is mentioned is as a slur about those weird Jews who in Antioch. In, in yes. Antioch, yes. I know, but why are we going on these tangents? Let's stick to the topic. I'm making a point that Paul is not trustworthy. Paul is a liar. I by mean, your own, by your own scripture, Paul is basically teaching one thing. And doing another when he's questioned about it. Yeah, I he's That's a, a hypocrite. God, it's like it's like me. I believe in Islam. I'm preaching Islam throughout the world, and I end up in a situation where people are like, oh, he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. Now, uh, do the opposite. Go and worship, bow to an idol, or you die. Don't do okay. That. No, no. Of course, I'm not going to do that because I. Uh, why would I do that? Because I'm a Muslim. Doing that is is basically. So he wasn't like bowing to an idol. There was no idol there to bow to. To him, the law is a curse. The law is a curse. Well, it is a constraint. And, and then he, he what, is, what does he do? He goes and practices the curse himself. Hang on, no, no. He called it a curse in one occasion to explain something. But in it's that, a curse, right? It, it, that in, in the way that it's a restraint, it's a law you Forget can't... Forget the ways. Is it a curse it, or not? It's a, law, it's a law that you can't really fulfill. It's too difficult for anyone to fulfill. Agreed. And but is, can, it a, is it a curse for that reason? You can only be saved by God. Okay. Is it a curse for that reason? In that context, when he was talking about it, it's yeah. a curse. In that context, so, so, so what he does, one having called, he it, called it a curse, having called it a curse, having called it a curse, he goes to Jerusalem, and he's told by the council, go and indulge in the curse. He's he called it a curse, and straight away he went to Jerusalem. No, 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 no. He I'm not. No, no, no. Years. Please try to understand my point. He calls it a curse that has been lifted by the crucifixion. Wait, wait, wait. And then he goes to Jerusalem, having called it a curse okay he goes to jerusalem the disciples tell him to indulge in the same curse 
I would invite anyone watching to read Acts in its entirety to get it in its context. So you think I'm taking it out of context? Read it in modern language, whichever your language happens to be. Do you think I'm taking it out of context? Footnotes that explain the original Greek. The ca 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 Catholic footnotes? Any footnotes that actually explain the original Hebrew and Greek. Okay. So, so you don't you think I'm actually spinning it because I'm taking it out of context. You're I'm spinning it. In a different light than no, I'm is. not. I'm yes. not. Okay, let's go again. Let's go again because I'm gonna. I really want this to happen. Let's go again. Paul is preaching to the Gentiles and the Jews in the Mediterranean world. You don't have to follow the Mosaic law for yes. decades. Yes. Law is a curse. It's been lifted. He said that once, but yeah. he said we're not constrained by it. Okay. So, what Jesus uh, actually said is the lowest oh, he, he, he has to say it once. He doesn't have to say it ten times. Well, I mean, because he, it's the word of God. It, 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 once is enough. It's okay. good enough. Right? What, what it actually is is that the law had come to its fulfillment. Right. So Paul is it's writing Jesus the word. Christ. Is Paul writing the word of God? Now it's over. And we're free. Is Paul, is Paul writing the word of God to you? Uh, yes. It's, it's um, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Then why is he going against it? He's not going against it. But he does the opposite. He goes... No. No, because the... Look, look, again, read. So that they know what they say about you is not true. But it was true. Okay. But it was true. So why didn't so, Paul Why didn't Paul stand there and say, Guys, this is what I've been preaching. It's true. I believe in it. Jesus died well, he and he lifted it. the curse of the law. If, so what does he do? If you keep it's, reading, the crowd gathers him. The... Uh, the uh, the, the Roman cohort has to come to prevent him from being killed there and there. And he gets a chance to speak to them in Aramaic. And he says, just those things. And then they try to kill him. So the Romans Let's take read. Him away. Shall we read it? Okay. So, so we have modern okay. English? Okay. Yeah, this is English. Okay. This is English. Modern? Yeah. modern English, yeah. Okay, okay. So then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you. But that you yourself are living... In obedience to the law, which is a lie. He wasn't living in obedience to the law, was he? Not to the mosaic law, no. Yeah, but again, you keep saying, look, is this, are you being deliberately annoying or is it, the law is the mosaic law, right? We are, no, we're not discussing any of the law. We're not talking about the British or French or American law, are we? There's also the law to uh, like obey the Ten Commandments. No, no, not that law. Because they are, the context, again, you keep no, talking, I know, I know. Uh, uh, you keep talking about the, the context. Motions, and so, the so, yeah, so yeah. they say, that, but that your, you yourself are living in obedience to the law. Why are they saying this? Because this is the impression they have. Well, he, maybe he himself was living in obedience to the law. Sorry? Maybe he himself was. Why was he? Why was telling he? others you don't have to, but he himself was. Oh, you're claiming this right now? I don't know. I okay, don't know. you don't. So, no, you're claim, so your, claim is, your claim is unacceptable because you're making a claim, okay. which is not there. What we, are, we, 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 we hold him accountable against his own teachings. He's telling the people, for the Jews and the Gentiles, the law is not applicable anymore. The Mosaic law is not applicable anymore because Jesus has died on the cross for us. He has lifted the curse of the law. He said it once. Before you say it, I will say it. He said it once. But when he comes to Jerusalem, for some reason, the council has this impression that he is living in obedience to the law. And what does he do? He actually confirms that perception by going to the temple and doing the law while he himself has been teaching against it. So this is a hypocrite. No. Okay, so again. Do you understand my point? I understand your point. But yeah. Again, go back in time to when they're actually having discussions about circumcision and dietary requirements, which is the law. It's inside the law. And it's, it's like the Jews are living according, the Jews who now believe in Jesus are living according to the law, dietary requirements, everything else. And they're saying the Gentiles have to do the same. And what Paul is saying, actually the Gentiles don't have to do the same. They are free of that. And in fact, everybody is free of that. But there's nothing wrong if people want to carry on doing it. It's just, it's a constraint. No, no, no. No one can really You're making things, no, no. Now you are making things up. The, the, is the issue, the discussion, no, no, no. The discussion is not about the Gentiles. I, I made it very clear earlier, didn't but, uh, I? Is this is about the Jews. Because James specifically mentions, or the council specifically mentions, that you are telling the Jews living among the Gentiles not to follow the law, which, which, he was, was. which he was. And then why does he not confront them and say to them, yes, I am, because I don't believe in that. I believe Jesus died. The Jews don't have to follow the Mosaic law anymore. But what does he do? Instead, he goes to the temple. He goes to the temple and he does the law. He practices the law. And, and, and he does this to confirm the perception of the council who think that he actually follows the law, which he doesn't.
right? So, the, the, so Paul, Paul is not deceiving the Gentiles. He is deceiving his own people. Well, I mean, the council knows his teaching, right? Because they had a whole other discussion beforehand about what Paul was teaching. Are you, are you not listening to me? I'm listening to I you. I made it very clear but that this is a discussion about Jews no, living among Gentiles. You keep taking things out of context. You know, when you read Acts, you have to read the whole of Acts. Right. No, we don't. Yes, you because do. whole of Acts is not relevant to this you point. Have to read about the no. previous times when they've had discussions about Yeah, chapter 15. Points, chapter 15, yes. Else. And and I mentioned it earlier, chapter 15 and chapter 21, though two places they had this conversation. Yeah, it's not like the council doesn't know what Paul is teaching. They know exactly what So Paul they, is but teaching. they don't know, they don't know whether he's actually telling the Jews not to follow the law. This is why the council tells him, take these men join in their purification purific rites and pay their, pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you. What reports? That you are telling the Jews living among Gentiles not to follow the law. These reports. So therefore, go and do these rites so that people know these reports about you. Oh, my phone died. Right. Okay. The, these reports are not true about you. Therefore, so that they know you are yourself living by the law, which he was, which he wasn't, which what he does, wasn't. What does he do when he's arrested and he speaks to the Jewish? Are you? Are you not? Uh, look, he look. How? Up. How can it? How can it make it more? He actually stands up for what he's been saying the whole time, right? And then the Jewish crowd tries to kill okay, him. Okay. <laughs> what, what's your name? Cyrus. 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 Does Paul teach the Gentiles? Sorry, forget the Gentiles. I mean, the whole point of him no, going no, to Jerusalem no, was that no. he's making his final okay, journey. Okay, wait. He's going to go to Rome. Forget about that. I'm, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about what he's teaching. Was he teaching the Jews living among Gentiles, don't follow the Mosaic law anymore? He's saying you don't have to, yeah. Yeah, good. He comes to Jerusalem Council and he's confronted about it. He doesn't speak up. He doesn't say that I am actually not teaching this or I am teaching this. He doesn't do. The council well, we tells him, no, 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 but we do know, we do know. The council tells him, go and do the law so that people know these reports are false. But they are not false. Those reports were true. But Paul doesn't tell them that these reports are actually not false. Well, I mean, Paul, are... Paul instead, Paul instead goes to the temple and does the rites of the law so that they think he is following the law, in, which isn't true. In one of Paul's letters, God, that... I don't, guys, do you understand me? This, is, is everyone with me? Letters, yeah. He, he Do you understand me? Are you listening to the conversation? For some reason, you're not getting it. In one of Paul's letters, yeah. he writes that when he's with the Jews, he will express himself as the Jews. When he's with the Gentiles, Look, he will be like wait, the Gentiles. I'm, 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 the I'm getting pain now. Wait. Do you understand me? The Paul's mission is to bring people to Christ, Jewish or Gentile. We're not discussing and that, brother. Cyrus, Cyrus, do you understand me? What my argument is? Do you understand my argument? Well, you don't understand context and the whole thing. Cyrus. I am giving the full context. No, you're not. He was he was oh, teaching. You're absolutely honest. Read the letters of Paul then. Was Paul teaching the Jews not to follow the law? Yes. And he comes to the, the, uh, the he comes to Jerusalem and does the opposite. Yes. Yes. So to is bring he people is to Christ? He does everything uh, he has so, to bring. People okay, to Christ. now we're talking. And he actually says now we're talking. So to bring people to Christ, Paul is actually lying or no. or or doing something he doesn't believe in. No, he will fit in. In order to talk to people and bring them around. So he, Paul will change his colors. Uh, well, his outlook, yeah, or the way he speaks to people, yes. So when Paul says to a Jew, I become a Jew, to a Gentile, that's I become it. a Gentile. That's the way. Ah, okay, so that's a hypocrite. In your words. No, yeah, right. no, that's a chameleon. No, he's a good that's chameleon. A, that, so to, when I walk into the club, I become, well, you know, I, I start dancing to the music. When I, I go to the mosque, I put on the hat and I start praying. Except this is, this like is, that. no. There's no clubs, there's no music. No, no I'm, I'm just giving people. an example. That's a hypocrite. Christ. That's no, a hypocrite. His That's entire a... life at that point is dedicated to... So Paul to is basically do as uh, do, do in Rome as Romans do, right? He is true to his mission. Yeah. Right? Which is he's not. To Christ. He's not. Yes. In Jerusalem, he's not telling the Jews to, fall, uh, to not follow the law. I know. When he's arrested, he's only talking about no, Christ. No, no, no. Everything is about Christ. I'm asking in Jerusalem, these Jews who believe in Jesus... Wait, 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 wait. wait. In Jerusalem, these Jews who believe in Jesus, why is Paul not telling them? Whoa. The Jews in the temple... No, 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 brother, listen to me carefully. These Jews in Jerusalem who believe in Jesus, not the temple. The temple authorities are not believing in Jesus. The Sadducees and the Pharisees are not believing in Jesus. So listen to me carefully, please. These Jews in Jerusalem who are talking to Paul, the council and others, um, um, those who believe in Jesus, okay, they are Jews. Yes. 
Why is Paul not telling them what he was telling telling the Jews in Gentile lands? If they believe in Jesus, that's the main thing. It's fine. You could still obey the law and still believe in Jesus, but the law is a constraint you don't but need. But Paul is saying, Paul is saying, the curse of the law has been lifted by Jesus' death on the that's cross. Right, because the law is a, is, is a constraint you don't need. If you want to live according to it, fine. So, so but if you live according so, to the law, you die by the law. So, so okay. So, was Paul sincere in his mission? Yes. He believed in. He died for he, it. He, okay. He believed in what he was teaching. Yes, he was, he was so why it. did he not teach that in Jerusalem to the Jews? Well, we've already discussed this. No, we're not. We haven't. He communicates to people the way he has to in order to get them to believe in Christ, which is his mission. So, so he has to hide things. He doesn't have to hide things. Yeah. He just has to do. He does the opposite of what he believes in. I mean, he didn't sacrifice the temples. He didn't do anything that's he idol did. worship. No, he didn't. No, no, no. In temple, he did the rites. Oh, like, okay. The, the he did the temple right. is yeah. not the same as like the temple of Jupiter. We're not. Ta why are we talk talking because about the, the, the Jewish temples? Why are we talking about pagans? Well, the pa because he's not sacrificed to idols, right? The Jewish temple is Cyrus. The, temple to the God of Abraham. I'm saying the Jews in Jerusalem. So he didn't do anything that he didn't actually. No, no. The, the Jews in Jerusalem, do they deserve to know that Jesus died for the sins on the cross and they should not be following the law, the Mosaic law? That do they, they deserve to know? That they don't have to follow. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do they deserve to know? Well, of course. And why did Paul prevent? And Paul didn't prevent that. When he was arrested, he stood up before a crowd and said exactly that. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Show me. Well, you get it out. Okay, show me. Where did he say that? Where? Well, in uh, Jerusalem. In, in Acts, when he was arrested, just below the text you had is the point where he gets arrested uh, and he speaks to and, the crowd. He makes a whole speech. Right. No, he tells the Jews not to follow the law. He tells them to believe in Christ. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're fixated on something that's not really that relevant. Listen, right? it is absolutely relevant. The, the, the issue of people are eating pig. They are eating pig. Yeah, they they pig are not pig. circumcising. They are, they're having germs inside the penis. They're not what you know, you know how bad uh, 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 not circumcising is. Do you know how bad it is? I don't know how bad it is. It causes cervical cancer. Let, let me pull out the risk. Uh, 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 problems caused by non-circumcision. I'll show you. This is what Paul did to the world. This, the reason why Christians in Africa, Christians in South America, Christians all over the world are not circumcising is because of Paul. Because and, of Paul. And, and, and Paul will be in hellfire burn if, he, if he's the... If he, no, look, look. If you don't circumcise, do you know what it causes? The problem it causes. If you don't cut your nails, what happens? They grow longer. They grow, and what happens? Just is it hygienic? Is it hygienic? It's not. Okay. Abraham is circumcising. Yeah. Moses is circumcising. Son, David. It wasn't oh, about wait, hygiene, brother, it was brother. It, uh, God commanded him for a reason to circumcise. Okay. All Israelite prophets. He set them apart. Good. And set them apart in what way? In, a, in goodness or in. in or in, okay. So, so problems caused by circumcision, uh, non, not circumcising. As the forked skin hangs over the penis head, it may sustain an injury. For example, the foreskin can catch in the zipper of jeans. Oh no, what? Okay. Six uncircumcised problems cause diagnosis and treatment. All they have to do is. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. No, 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 no. It's impossible to do that. Is it? Yeah. It causes phimosis. It causes paraphimosis. It causes, it causes bacterial or fungal infection. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not making this up. It causes injury at times, yeast infection, ST, STIs. Well, that doesn't know. Okay. Bad sexual. No, no, bad brother, sexual brother. Sir, this is this is how. Well, it's sexually transmitted. Okay, There's look. Sex, when, yeah. when, you, when, when, you, when, you know, when you don't circumcise as a man, you're urinating, you're having sex at times, well, you and you can't too. get inside the skin, can you? Can you possibly get inside the skin? I don't know. I was circumcised. So I don't Good. Really you're know. lucky. You're born in, the, in Iran or wherever you were born, right? Okay. Yeah. So, if if I'm asking a question, all that urine coming out, all that seem, all that sexual, you know, the, those liquids going inside your pore skin. Wait, wait, have wait. I, wait so no, 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 no. I'm circumcised. That. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, 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 I'm asking. Can you get inside your foreskin? Can any human on the planet, not circumcised, can? Huh? I don't know. They, they can't. They can't. I'm I telling you, <laughs> this is what causes, this is what causes problems for men and women. You should really okay. ask someone here who's not been okay. circumcised and talk to them about that. Because I can't say anything. Look, we, we have scientific research. We have research that shows us that, and this is Paul. Christians don't do it. 
Christians, Christians are God. more than two billion people on the planet. They're not so no, no, no. now. Now, amazingly, now amazingly, African governments, Christ, Christian African governments, are paying people. They don't even have money for food. They are paying people to go and circumcise. You know why? Because it reduces the the risk of HIV by 50 percent. Yes, brother, brother. Okay, this is what your Catholicism does to people. Your Catholicism is, I mean, this is one of the, one of the yeah. outcomes, okay? Yeah. This is what your pa your Paulinian yeah. Christianity does if, to people. If people pay attention to the teaching of Catholicism, which is don't fornicate, don't commit adultery. You're not really at a risk of catching HIV because you have to have unprotected sex with different people. So, 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 okay, fine, fine. Does Catholicism allow marriage? Yes. Okay. If you have foreskin and you get married to a woman and you keep having sex with her and not wash inside your foreskin, uh, she will, she's likely to get a problem. Well, She's likely to get a problem, right or wrong? Given that the, the, the number of people in the world that's has Christ diminished, that's, I don't that's, know. That's right, Christianity. You know. Okay, even pig. The people, those people who eat pig meat, right? It's bad. I mean, scientifically speaking, it rots. It, 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 it goes rots. off. No, no, all meat rots. But pork rots quicker. Would you agree? So easy to cook it. Yeah, yeah, and chicken does as well, right? So well, but chickens, but that's not the reason why. Chicken, that's not the reason why we... Pork, uh, pig is the filthiest animal. In, in, on earth, well, right? You, you don't okay. eat it covered in okay. mud. Okay. Pa what, what does Paul do? The Jews don't eat pig. Jesus never ate pig. All the Israelites don't eat pig. Paul comes along, don't circumcise, keep your foreskin, and go and eat pig meat. Actually, Peter said that. Okay. Whatever goes down doesn't, you know, and your heart has to be circumcised and all those things. Yeah, we, I'm aware of these things. Okay. Yeah. The point is, there are consequences. I mean, I say the same thing to those people, those religions who don't believe in shaving their armpits, shaving their hair, okay? They think that this is the natural position. Okay, then don't cut your nails. Don't cut your nails. Don't, nails okay, okay. Don't cut your toenails. Don't cut your nails and see what happens. Natu be natural. Okay, you came out from your mother. Okay, don't cut the cord. Yeah. yeah, don't cut the umbilical, oh. carry the placenta around. Oh, didn't take carry it around with you for the didn't rest of your life, up. okay? So for, we have to do these things. Okay, so that there are certain things you, as human beings, what separates us from, from, from animals is some of these hygienic practices we have, right? And they come from religion. They, I mean, in Islam, in Islam, we are told to circumcise, we are told to shave our armpits, we're told, we are taught to wash ourselves uh, after toilet, we are, we are taught to, to shave our pubic hair, we are taught to, be, 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 to smell nice, we are. Have, we have. To, we have been taught to brush our teeth five times a day with salah. Five times. Yes, the Prophet said, if it wasn't hard, I would command. It, it would be obligatory. It's not obligatory. It's not, but it is. It is. It is rewarded. Do you brush your teeth no, I don't. Okay. I don't. We have this concept of sivak. You know, the the stick, the, the stick. tooth stick, oh, okay. the tooth stick. So before we make ablution, we can quickly clean our teeth and make ablution. So this is not obligatory. This is not. This is an option. This is a. This is a recommendation from the Prophet. So. We, we believe Islam is not only an ideology, a faith that makes sense, that makes perfect sense worshipping one God alone who created the universe and following the prophets. On top of that, the teachings make sense. They are hygienic. I mean, we, do, we don't eat pig. We circumcise. We have to keep ourselves clean. I mean, there is a proper procedure of uh, when you go to the washroom to toilet, you have to wash yourself. Okay, I'm not you can't. Those. Yeah, but then, then look. You don't want to eat pig, don't you think? Well, Paul, Paul didn't the leave. Paul, say you have to eat pig. No, of course not. Of course, of, co of course not. But it is a, a pig is a delicacy all over the Christian world. It's not a delicacy. It's a well, everyone eats it. Yeah, everyone eats. Everyone it. eats it. Okay, why do they eat it? When Jesus it's forbade available. it. Jesus forbade it, brother. Jesus he didn't need. He upheld the Mosaic law. Jesus, throughout his ministry. He upheld the Mosaic law. He never, he because never the went again. Mosaic law came to fulfillment in him. So claimed Paul. Itself didn't practice it. And also Jesus when he was talking to John. So, so now you're saying that the law was fulfilled in him. Yes. Therefore, the law doesn't have to be followed. Well, I'm, I am free of it. Okay. So why didn't Paul free the Jews of Jerusalem from it? Well, you could live with it if you want to live with it. That's not Paul's choice, is it? It's just they're afraid. They it's don't not, have to. It, but it's, it's what, pa what Paul was teaching, was it from God? Yes. Why didn't he teach it in Jerusalem? You 
can live according to the Lord. No, brother, brother. When he some, did. Well, no, no, no. When he was no. arrested, he did. No, no. Well, the, the, That's Jude, why they want to be no, killed. No, in Jerusalem, he goes to the temple and he practices the law to show those Jewish people and who believed in Jesus. And he was arrested and he spoke in front of everyone about Christ. Christ yes, there. believing in Christ, of course. He's, he's. I'm not talking about the Jews who. But one follows the other. Who, they? who was he preaching in front of? Christ. Uh, Jews who didn't believe in Jesus. Uh, yeah, the, the crowd in general. So why are you, why are you deliberately ignoring my point? I'm saying, those Jews who did believe in him, who did believe in Jesus Christ. Okay, why did he not tell them don't follow the law anymore? Well, in the early debates, he did. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, no, no. Gentiles, please don't conflate. Don't conflate. Deliberately don't conflate. Again, again, again. Keep a, Don't conflate. Gentiles are not being discussed here. I'm talking about Jews okay. in particular because the question was the Jewish people. These Jews in Jerusalem who believe in Jesus. Was Peter a Jew? Yes. What did he say? What did he say? He had his vision where God told him what God has made is not unclean and you can eat any animal. Okay. And he took that to the council. He told them what he had seen. They accepted it. Jews accept for Gentiles. Oh, for Gentiles. No, for no, 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 no. Okay, why didn't the Jews then eat pig? For himself no, too, no, no, no. That was for Gentiles. For, for, that was for Gentiles. I'm insisting that was for not the Jews. What you have to explain to me: Why is Paul deliberately hiding this knowledge from the Jewish people when it is from God? Well, he didn't hide it. But he's not telling he them. He's not. He's he's practicing the law in front of them. Said, he went around the Mediterranean preaching. So he was hiding. You see, this is why I am such uh, a believer in Islam. Okay, such a strong. I mean, I strongly believe in Islam. You know why? Because when I have conversations like this, this shows me the weakness of, of your faith and your 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 convictions. Because you keep spinning things. You keep going around the world. Show me the weakness of anything because you cherry pick things that you just. Brother, have I cherry picked today? I'm I'm dealing with a specific incident. You have to take the whole thing. I, I, I have to take you know, the whole thing when it's consistent. Agreed? You know, when I, when I first started going to church, none of it made sense to me because I still had a secular world. Because you had, you had, you had, you had what we call natural disposition, which was corrupted by the church. No, it, the, the church of, took no, people saying, from monotheism, worshipping one God, into worshipping three beings, or no, three persons, rather. When I went to the Christianity, Sorry. I didn't believe any of it. I didn't really understand it. I had my dreams, so I had the, faith that By the way, the, the church became you know, guilty of paganism in the fourth century. They made, they put two persons on par with God Almighty, oh, God God's the Father. God okay. is the Trinity. It's not like when? Thing. Since when? Since always, since before. The no, brother, of time. since when? It was when, when, when was it declared to the Christians? When did the church come to the Christians and tell them, actually, God is a Trinity? There are three persons we have to worship. When? When did I, that I happen? Don't know when the word Trinity was used. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Please, please listen to my right question. When did the church tell the Christians there are three co-equal, co-eternal partners? I don't know the date. Uh, okay, I, I know the date. I don't know what, when did that date was right. It was 381 CE. No, because Peter worshipped the Son and the Holy Spirit. Brother, please. The council please. worshipped the Son and the Holy Spirit. For the first... For the first 300 years, Christians, butchers, peasants, tailors, hairdressers, peasants, generals, kings. They were not for, for the first 300 years. Maybe in Ethiopia, that was the first well, They were governors. They were governors, not kings. Not, not Const the Constant, Constantine was the first person, yeah. allegedly. So in the fourth yeah, century. Yeah, yeah. Let's say first 300 years, right? All of these people who believed in Christ, did they actually believe in the doctrine of the Trinity as the church declared it in the year 381. It's really hard to say because they were suppressed. So I don't actually know the so, answer. So, so the if, bishops did. Okay. As a Catholic, what's your, as a Catholic, what's your belief? Anyone who doesn't believe in the Trinity and believes in only one God, God the Father, and doesn't believe anyone else is equal to Him. Well, at least you believe in God. Yeah, That's yeah. Do you think they have salvation? Yes, absolutely. So someone who doesn't believe in the Trinity oh, has... Yeah, absolutely. So, so why don't you... Why don't you... Okay. To be safe, why don't you abandon belief in this system that came about 400 well, years later? To be safe, I have belief in the system. You could be saved without it, but it's safer to have belief in it. So, so to you, someone who believes in only the Father as the only true God and doesn't believe in Jesus Christ as God or the Holy Spirit as you God. You can still be saved. 
seriously, how? If you love other people, which is God's dictate. That's not Catholicism, by the way. No, brother, you don't know Catholicism. You're not yes, Catholic. I am Catholic. Catholic. Catholics would declare such a person a heretic. No. Ex no. Brother, Catholics are burning people alive historically for this. As for Protestants the, and other people. Brother, do you, do you know, do you know, there was a man called Miguel. Yeah, as were Protestants. Miguel yes, yeah, I agree. I'm agreeing with you. So why are you being disingenuous here now? I'm not. You know Catholicism would not sustain such a position. Would not even accept it. it. does. No, brother. Why were they burning people? If you go to heaven, you just have to be Bro Okay. Why were the Catholics burning people for having similar beliefs? Have believing in uh, Unitarianism. Believing in one God, not the Father and the Son. I don't know if they no, not the Son and the Spirit, sorry. I don't know what they were burning people for. It's, a lot of people were killed through the centuries. Some by Catholics. Are you aware of the Catholic Church burning people alive? It happens. In the Inquisition, people were burnt alive. Yeah. Why? Like Why, brother? Why? Not converting to Catholicism, turning to Protestantism. Thank you very much. Time, Thank you. You're making my point now. So, so, so your, so your classical Catholicism would not. Well, most of the people who were killed in those times weren't actually killed by the Catholic Church. They were killed by practicing Catholics. But not by the Catholic Church. It wasn't bishops saying, "Kill them." They did it for something. They did it for maybe twenty thousand people over the century. Most of them were killed by princes. Twenty thousand. By mobs. Twenty thousand people. By is people who didn't want to wait for the listen, bishops to come and say, listen, "Bring us to witnesses." The, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has been one of the most devastating experience for many native people in the world, indigenous people. Explain. Example. Canada. What about Canada? I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. The Catholic Church ran schools yes. called they did. okay called residential schools. And there was abuse there. No, no, brother. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm surprised that you know this I much. And you're no, walking correction, around correction, like a correction, you're, correction, you're, you're walking around correction. as a Catholic. It was run by Catholics, okay. but it went on the Catholic Church. No, no. Yeah. The, okay. the, you so cannot. Okay. Are you telling me? Are you telling the me they were not getting funding from the church? They were Catholic. They okay. may have been getting funding by the So, Catholic so they church. were, this is what, this but was institutional. This church. was institutional. And what's happened since then? There have Wait. been other schools that aren't Catholic where there's child abuse. Okay, let me, now let me explain. So let, me, let, me, let, let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, no, no, I'm saying. There's child abuse by secular people, there's child abuse by the police, there's child abuse in prisons, there's okay. child abuse in Okay, the homes. crusade, okay, okay, was, was the church, okay, forget, I'm going to give you a big one that you cannot deny. Was the church directly behind the crusades? Um. Some of it, yes. Some the Pope, it. do you know? What, yeah, you know? He, he gave his consent for some crusades. Thank you, that's it, that's my point. Okay, well, what, okay. What crusade? Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Didn't, wasn't Islam born in blood? No, it wasn't. Wait, wasn't the Arabian Peninsula conquered? Wasn't the biggest city in the Christian city in the world like that conquered? Wasn't no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. No, no, wasn't brother, brother. Wait. Wasn't yes. Conquered? Yes. Wasn't North Africa yes. conquered? Yes. All of it all was. All the way up to Spain. All. And a few hundred years later, a Pope thinks, hmm, maybe we should do something about this. Yes. Okay. So, 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 do you know why? Why I'm gonna give you one example. Yeah. Why was Syria and Egypt conquered? Yeah. Good question. Okay. Well, and how was it conquered? Is is very important, right? Yeah. Okay. How can you just walk into a land and take it, right? The church, your church, church. was yeah, 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 Catholic church was directly persecuting the the people of Syria and Egypt because they were Orthodox Christians. You know, you know, you know, no you know, separation wait, brother, brother, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you that what, came a few centuries later. let me explain. No. You know the issue of monophysites and duophysites? No. Okay. Monophysites were those people who believed in one nature of Christ and these were the Syrians and the Egyptians. Yeah. Duophysites were the people who believed in two natures of Christ, the Catholic position. Yeah, yeah that Christ has two natures. One is human, one is divine. Okay, time. right. The clergy, the Byzantines, who were uh, uh, basically uh, led by the church, the papacy at the time, right, they were persecuting the masses in Syria and Egypt. And when Muslims, the Arabs came in conquering, the, the, the Arabs came in conquering, they were welcomed by the people of Egypt, the Christians of Egypt and Syria, because they were facing severe persecution. At the hands, at the hand of the church. One case, Spain. In Spain, in the year 633 CE, there was a council held in the city of Toledo, the fourth council of Toledo, an ecumenical council, a church council, okay, led by the Catholic Church. It was decreed 
that all the children of the Jewish people of the Iberian Peninsula are to be taken away by force and are to be raised as Catholics, by Catholics. That was okay. not that's evil. Bro brother, this was ecumenical. So if you, you know what that means? If, yeah. Brother, this was ecumenical. This was God inspired by the Pope. I'm saying if you know, it was done, you know, wrong. Pope, okay. How, how can, is Pope the voice of God? Uh, well, yeah. Yes? Well, the Pope and the Magisterium uh, together. Thank yeah. you. So God is doing all of this? No, this was directly. This was this was right. directly done by the support Catholics of the people. Are capable of doing wrong things, well. brother Pope. I'm saying, are you not listening to me, Pope? Did God wage the crusade? No. But Pope did. Yes. So was Pope speaking for God? I don't know. Sometimes I think not. Pope, Please, Pope, are you are you not listening to? Are you? You can you can have people, popes, but then right? don't, the say pope, don't say Pope. Don't say Pope. So you have a hole in the, in your in your system. No. There you go. You have a hole in your Catholicism. So, so look, look. Because Catholic Church has been guilty. The Church. I'm saying the Catholic Church. Okay, as an institution, has been guilty of crimes against humanity, crimes against children. In particular, what happened in Canada, the residential schools. People don't know about this. The world doesn't know about this. The world knows about okay. It. From you know how big Canada is. All over Canada, these Catholic-run residential schools for Native American children, these children were by force taken away from their parents. They were basically raised as Catholics, okay? And then they were systematically wiped out. There are hundreds of hidden graves are being discovered right now. Google residential school. Oh, this is true. Uh, this is true. Exa so this is institutional. Because this is not this is not one priest or one nun doing it in a remote school somewhere in Canada. This is throughout Canada, wherever there were residential schools, they are digging and they are finding graves of Native American children, of people of Native American. And this was institutional. This can, this was policy. This couldn't be accidental. This couldn't be one school there, one school. So this was all over Canada, and it's happening right now. I mean, they they're finding graves right now. And killing children is evil. I you have to say you. How could you how could you possibly stand there as a Catholic and defend that position? You can't. Exactly. Of course, it's not like the Pope in Rome said signing death warrants for children in Canada. No, Pope did other things like that. He did other things like that. he didn't do this, oh, but sure. he. I mean, we don't have evidence for that. But who who can actually go into the uh, the Vatican archives? Have you ever been there? Go, Get no, me in there. Then I'll do. You can't even go and see what Pope signed Catholics to. Catholics are capable of doing bad things. No, aren't most popes, people, popes, aren't Muslims capable of doing bad things. Hundred percent, okay. but but. No, you will struggle in but the last found other schools wait, now where wait bro, 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 brother 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 i i find it so fascinating i find it so fascinating that when the western world or the catholic church or the christendom in general when you have crimes like that on your record you have an audacity to point a finger at the muslims and the muslim civilization because you will never find i'll i'll i'll, I'll you will never find you will, you will never find any parallel to Atlantic slave trade in the Muslim civilization. You will never find, never, wait, 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 wait. let me finish, let me finish my list and you can undo me. Okay, you will never find any parallel to the Inquisition in the history of Islam. You will never find, you will never find anything like witch, mass witch burning of women throughout Christendom. You will never find burning of heretics burning we alive to death of women, no we don't okay well, don't no no, no 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 brother brother stop it stop it stop it okay don't don't try it don't try it it's not gonna work okay you will never find the crusades you will never find what was islamic wait, state do? that's a crusade uh, which it? sorry the islamic state all the evil they did that's a and, and you know who condemned them the muslims i'm sure the muslims around the world condemned them and told them shut up get lost we have nothing to do with you but that wasn't the case with the things I'm mentioning. So wait, wait, okay. You will never find evil, expansionist, exploitation, exploitationary, um, colonialism. The Ottoman Empire, okay. again. No, okay, let's talk about it. Now, no, let me finish my list, okay. So all the mass murders, the Second World War and the First World War, the, the Jewish Holocaust, okay, the Holocaust of the... Holocaust uh, of the Armenians by the Ottoman Turks? No, secular... Young Turks, not Ottomans. 
They were not Ottomans. They're the ones who abolished the Ottomans. Well, I can say no, 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 wait, no, no, wait, no, no. I, I, I can, I can handle it. Armenian. Uh, no, 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 no. So Catholics are never secular. Catholics are secular by default because they don't follow uh, the the, uh, the the mosaic law. So they have to follow the laws of the land, right? Okay. You know. Yeah. 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 We. We. No. You're right. You're right. So the Armenian genocide. And isn't it amazing, isn't it telling that you have to jump from the life of the Prophet straight to Armenia, 1,300 years of Muslim civilization, and you point to Armenia as a genocide, as an example of Muslim okay. And it's a good example. It's a good example. I, I take Let's it. I take it. Abuse. The fact that you can't find anything in the middle. What about Janissaries, when the Ottomans went around kidnapping children? Have you, have you read, families? have you, be, now be honest, have you read any book on Janissaries? Ever? Not recently, just watch documentaries, not, not books. Okay. Go and read an academic book on Janissaries and see how the system worked. There is no parallel. What, what The crimes I just mentioned to you, all those major historic crimes in the history of, you know, Atlantic slave trade, it went on for 400 years. The witch burning and heretic burning, let me finish, went on for at least 300 years. From 1450s to 1750s, Europe was burning women en masse. Brother, every, you know, you know, there, there is this place we are standing here right now in London Speaker's Let's Corner, right? Let's talk about slavery. No, wait. There, there is a spot they call Tyburn Gallows. Let's talk about a, No, no, wait. Let me explain. Right here where we stand, Let's right? Let's talk about slavery. Did not the whole world have slavery? Yes. From antiquity. D different models. Why is slavery, different models. Why is slavery a taboo now? Okay, wait. Because the Christian British Empire abolished it, went around the world in its empire and outside its empire, Forcing countries to give it up. What is um, what do you call it? Gumbo diplomacy. Okay. Sometimes it's about trade. Sometimes it's going to the Sultan of Zanzibar saying, "Give up slavery." He says, "No, give up slavery." Do you so know? Bang, bang, you're, you're, bang, you're, you're, new you're, Sultan, slavery. You're, you're, you're a Catholic, right? Yeah. Do you know who opened the door to slavery? Do you know? Catholics. Slavery existed Catholic, before the church, the church, the church no, did it. Slavery existed before. Catholic. No, no, no. I'm talking about Atlantic slave trade. I'm talking about 400 years of brutality against the African people who were kidnapped in their millions. Yep. The number is anywhere between 11 to 100 million. 11 million to 100 million people. I yes. Think it's 100 million. Uh, brother, the population uh, 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 please, please. Okay, um, okay, go and millions read. Maybe, but uh, not 100 there's a book by Hugh Thomas, Atlantic Slave Trade. Okay. Go and read it. It's there. The numbers are there. The number is anywhere between 11 to 100 a hundred million, anyway, between that. It, it could be high. When the world's population was much lower at the time. No, 400 years. Yeah. No, for four, I, the number is for 400 years. Atlantic slave trade continued for 400 well, I years. Mean, I don't know about the Latin Americas, but North America from, was from, hundreds of thousands, not the, the of year, years. The year is for, from 1500 all the way up to mid 19th century. I, mean, okay. I don't know about Mexico or Brazil, but in North America, it was just hundreds of thousands, just, it was a lot. Of yeah, I agree. Six, only six percent, only six percent went to North Af uh, North America. Ninety-four percent of the slaves from Africa went to Central America or Latin America or, or Southern America. Okay, so I agree with you. And most of them, or a lot of them, would be would be worked to death within four years because they had to work in sugar plantations. Their life was hell. Their life was very difficult. And the Catholic Church was directly behind it. This is the point I want to make it. You would never be able to sustain an institution like that Islamically. In the Muslim world, the ulama would be at war with a king, with a sultan who did, we had slavery. I'm not saying we did. No, but when you say the word, no. The guys looking after the harems. Uh, exactly. They were, I, they were brother, but there is no, what, them would do, die. Do, you, do you know, no, right? no, no. No, come on. Okay, no, please. They didn't have Where saved. did you read that? Where did you read that? Uh, it was a book by Where? Thomas Sowell. Um, can't remember the title. Well, there was, I think it was on slavery. So nine out of ten people would, in the harem. Nine out of the ten. So they would take ten men, castrate them. Nine out of ten would die, and it's the one that would go to the harem. Die how? Of infection, of pain, of bleeding out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ottomans were not doing the castration, by the way. Well, whoever was they were not doing the castration. They were not doing the castration. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, fine. So, so they're not doing the castration. People are doing castration, and Ottomans are buying for them, them for the harem. Yeah, but I'm not justifying it. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, as bad, as bad. Their children were killed. Brother, okay, it's like talking. I mean, I'm talking about the elephant, and you're showing me 
<laughs> you know, I, 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 yeah, no. We both have elephants. No, no, we right? don't. I don't. Yeah. I, 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 yes. So, so the point is, the point is, again, to repeat my point, it is absolutely fascinating that Western intellectuals or thinkers have an audacity to point a finger at the Muslim civilization when they have this history behind them. Colonialism, Inquisition, Crusades, Atlantic slave trade, mass burning of witches, mass burning of uh, heretics. The list goes on and on and on. It was only in the 19th century, even up to the 19th century, colonialism committed major catastrophes, including the, the famine in Bengal. Four million people. Churchill, Churchill was no different to Hitler. Hitler is just got a bad name because yeah, uh, you think so? I think if it's Hitler was in killed. charge of the British Empire, there would be no one left in India or Africa or anywhere. Well, same I can be said by, about Churchill. He was a racist bigot who 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 was directly behind the Bengal famine. Okay, so so people I don't know they have an audacity to point a finger at the Muslims and the Muslim civilization without reading the history. They, they, most people out there, they haven't picked up a book on the Islamic civilization and what it has done for the world. They just point, because they watch news, they watch all of these anti-Islam, anti-Muslim news channels and newspapers, because Muslims are not other Muslims are not running these news channels. Muslims don't have a voice on them. I don't really okay. watch the news. I'm tired of the news. Well, well, what you I can... would say is people of all religions or under the label of any religion. Can be no, no, no. Don't put us in the same hang basket. On, on. Don't I'm put us. Don't say, put us in the same basket believe, as the Catholics and the and the and the and the, and the Protestants heaven. and the colonial if you powers. In God, if you love your neighbor, you will go to heaven. You don't have to be a Christian. It just helps in my point of view. You don't have to. No, if you if you if you if you I I I I would agree with it partially. And I say, if you are a good person, you are good to your neighbors, and you're a charitable person, Absolutely. and if you worship idols, you cannot go to paradise. You don't have salvation. You'll go to hellfire. So you have to worship one true God who created you. You pay respects to him before you start paying respects to others. Okay, it's like me going to my mother who gave me birth, and I say to her, stay put in the house, just lie and die on that bed. I'll go and help the neighborhood. I'll go and do charity work to uh, that auntie who lives around the corner, or that boy, that orphan boy, I'm going to go and feed him. My mom is, my son, I gave you life. I gave you birth. Can you please give me water? Can you give me food? Oh, you're okay. You're okay. You're fine. You're fine. I don't fine. really know no, what you're saying. I, right? No, I'm saying, okay. I'm saying Allah, God, who gave us life, who gave us health, who gave us wealth, who gave us everything. If we go and do all kind acts or acts of compassion around the world, and we're not recognizing our Lord who made us and not worshiping him to hell with your kindness. It's like you leave your mother at home and you're being kind to the neighborhood. No, to hell with your kindness. Your mother deserves your respect more. I guess this she's, is the, she's the first, she's number one. Is God a, is number one. Well, maybe this is a solid difference between our religions because I believe that. No, I believe. God is love. Yeah. And if you love, even if you've never heard No, God, God is loving. God is not love. Heaven. God is loving. We God call is God. Loving, yeah. God is love and God wants us to love. Okay. So, so you can only love when you actually believe in God. Thank you so much. Right. Cyrus, talk, the, nice talking to you. No hard feelings. So there was Ad, uh, Adnan. 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 Hopefully Adnan. we'll talk again at some point. Yeah. Thank you. No Thank hard feelings. No hard feelings. No, 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 not, not no. at all. This, this was a conversation and I hope people can learn from it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Good speaking to you. You too. Um, next week, if you're here, we'll continue. Yeah. Uh, around the same time? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whenever. Sorry. Uh, I'm just, I have my... Okay. Well, I'm not a...